So good morning. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to represent Swisscom, and it's, it's always better to have customers telling the story. I brought Christian Bach from Swissvi with me, and he will join the conversation after I give some introductions. So my personal cloud story at Swisscom started roughly five years ago. And there was a meeting with a company called Pivotal I've never heard before. And then there was something, they were talking about Cloud Foundry. And I learned only afterwards in a workshop in Emmental what it really meant. And being a software engineer by heart and education, of course, I was enthusiastic about it. But I could never imagine what we were able to do during this last past five years. So we have created a solid cloud foundation at Swisscom so that we are able to run every kind of workloads. Whether you want a deployment that runs on Swisscom premises as a virtual private environment, or you have uh, things you would like to run even in public clouds. Our vision is to provide managed services and typical outsourcing capabilities for all these environments. And of course, we did a huge investment in what we call the Enterprise Application Cloud, where we have Cloud Foundry as the core of it. And recently, and some of you might know, we moved also the infrastructure layer towards the elements from our core partner, Dell Technologies, so we have hardware and software from those guys. And I would like to take the chance to thank the Swisscom team for enduring and bringing up all these fantastic capabilities on both sides. The guys building the infrastructure, and I met some also today in the morning, the ones that are building applications on top. So we do lots of eat your own dog food in that environment, and so we are proud to see the progress. So we have customers leveraging these infrastructures as well as we leverage them at Swisscom. And I remember our Cloud Foundry initiative around the application cloud started as a grassroots initiative. And nobody in management did ever imagine that we would end up where we are nowadays. We have geo-redundant deployments already since quite some time, and we are running mission-critical workloads that every Swisscom customer uses on a daily basis on this infrastructure. And of course, as we are on such an event, we have to announce something new. We are building on our solid grounds, filling the gap that is there between infrastructure as a service with the more heavyweight VMs and the platform as a service capabilities that sometimes uh, lack capabilities. And I think with the container capabilities, we built on top of the infrastructure from uh, Pivotal. I think this brings our offering to the next level so that we have really a more complete environment bringing lightweight capabilities to do massive scale out. But I think Christian is really much better suited to tell you what he is going to do with his team. Uh, and I think you guys already started. General availability of all these capabilities we will have beginning of next year. Thank you. Thank you. So, hi from my side. My name is Christian Boch, and I'm Chief Application Architect with SwissRe. SwissRe is a wholesale provider of reinsurance, insurance, and other forms of risk transfer. As a global financial services company, we're subject to very many different local jurisdictions and regulations, and therefore on many different clouds. We are faced with a multi-cloud world. In this context, the rise of containers to becoming first-class citizens of deployments to us might simply be the best thing since sliced bread, both in terms of deployments and in business continuity terms. But let me tell you all about our container journey at the podium with a few slides of mine. 
So we have no demo. There's nothing going to break beside me, maybe. <laughs> all right, so it's all my fault then. Multi-cloud wasn't the original cause for us getting into Docker and containers in the first place. Our original motivation stemmed from an engineering desire to leverage the paradigm of cloud-native computing to a bigger extent than what 12-factor apps on Cloud Foundry, and its time in being specific here, the Cloud Foundry application runtime allowed for. We were confronted with services that were not stateless, but stateful, with service instances hosting a dedicated partition of an overall state space that needed a stable network identity and oftentimes an associated, dedicated, persistent volume. Services typically being part of architectures where events need to be routed to self-contained service instances, implementing reactive event processors. Respecting local orderings and with event processing semantics, depending on aggregated state, from previous events having reached the respective partition. That's for the for first bullet. We were confronted with services that were exposing multiple endpoints, not exclusively RESTful, if at all based on HTTP. Or then, various flavors of services that were in a Cloud Foundry application runtime world being considered backing services, like distributed commit logs, message queues, or databases. So these services were asking for more. They were in desperate need of a home outside of the application runtime. Enter Kubernetes. So as you can read on the slide, we started looking for solid grounds similar to what Cloud Foundry offered, but for just about any sort of cloud-native payload. Initially, we explored solutions ranging from Docker Swarm and custom Kubernetes installations, which led us to the discovery of the advantages of real container runtimes. We came to appreciate the control we gained in running containers, beginning being it in isolating them by means of overlay networking, being able to scale instances up and down in container application, spanning software-defined networks, of which you see a little sketch of mine on the right-hand side, uh, between them and getting strict governance in restricting any other communication paths. And even further, having a say on lowest level operating system security policies in container execution, down to the individual kernel module access level. For us, in particular, the possibility of limiting a container's connectivity perimeter was key in getting green lights in running third-party containers, not only in protecting other enterprise services from, let's be positive and just call them noisy neighbors, but in days of ubiquitous internet connectivity, also in strictly governing any sort of hosting platform internal network egress as one fundamental measure in preventing from data breaches to external parties. After running our experimental clusters for a while on the Swisscom YAS, we realized that us taking care of Kubernetes both in installation and operation, was not really what we want or would be expected to be doing as a non-platform provider that we are. What we really wanted was a CAS to be operated by Swisscom. So not quite like the PaaS, the Swisscom App Cloud on the right-hand side, and not like the YAS on the left-hand side, where we manage the biggest share of the stack ourselves, we were looking for the middle ground. Swisscom managing a container orchestrator, a container execution engine for us. A platform on which we could not only bring our own runtimes and stateful services, but also run middleware components of our choosing or use components from Swisscom services offering. We were striving for a platform allowing for autonomy on solid grounds 
gaining freedom from what a pass allows while not having to face the chores of installation from plain vanilla virtual machines, and not having to operate the solid grounds ourselves. So what did we do? We approached our long-term partner with which we present today, Swisscom, on those accounts and came to find fertile grounds. Swisscom, as we heard just a few minutes ago, was contemplating and investigating the Cloud Foundry container runtime and thinking about a managed Kubernetes offering themselves and had even started evaluating the pivotal container service already. As used to with Swisscom, we could not only count on a knowledgeable partner ready to help us write yet another chapter in our cloud journey, but we got readily accommodated with our big enterprise special, some might call it legacy, demands, like the hosting of Corba IAOP-based enterprise Java beans, demanding for unusual Kubernetes stack features, like the direct addressability of pods. In that spirit, thank you, Swisscom. Thank you. And thank you all for having me. It's great to have customers like those. Yeah.